Hello everybody, this is the Structures Guy and today we're talking about why Roman concrete is not better than modern concrete. You might have read this article about why 2000 year old Roman concrete is so much better than what we produce today. Or this article, why Roman concrete still stands strong while modern concrete version decays. Both of which have several misconceptions that contradict what concrete experts know about modern concrete. You might know that the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world is the Pantheon in Rome, Italy, which is still standing after 2000 years after its construction. So how did this structure last a long time while our modern concrete only lasts up to a hundred years? Well, today I'm here to explain why using Roman concrete for modern structures would not be practical. It is known that concrete is a composite material that almost always requires reinforcing steel to resist tension since concrete can only resist compression. Concrete and steel work well together because they have a similar coefficient of thermal expansion, meaning when they are subjected to an increase or decrease in heat, they expand or contract at approximately the same percentage, which ensures that they stay bonded cohesively at any temperature. However, the steel has one major weakness, which is it can rust or corrode. Not only does steel corrosion decrease the strength of rebar, but the byproduct iron oxide expands creating unwanted stresses in the concrete that leads to cracking and eventually failure. Corrosion of steel in the concrete is in fact the main cause of failure in concrete. The Romans did not use any reinforcing steel in their concrete, which is a major difference to modern concrete. So you might be asking why do we need to use reinforced concrete? The answer is that if we use unreinforced concrete, like the Roman Empire did, we won't be able to achieve the structures we build now such as high-rise buildings and long-span bridges. The modern structures we build now experience more complex forces and loading than the ones built in the Roman Empire, and thus it would not be practical at all to use unreinforced concrete as our modern structures experience a combination of compression tension, shear, and torque, forces, and moment. Using unreinforced concrete would solve the corrosion issue for sure, but it would create a lot of structural issues where it would catastrophically fail under our complex modern loading and forces. That is because the Romans had different structural and architectural needs than we do now with our modern structures due to the rapid growth in population which is much bigger than the population during the Roman Empire time. Adding rebar in modern concrete makes our concrete better than the Roman concrete. The second reason for why Roman concrete is not better is related to weather and climate. Most people who say Roman concrete is better forget the fact that Roman structures were not under severe cycles of freezing and thawing, meaning that the thermal expansion of Roman structures wa was pretty minimal. However, concrete used where the temperature differences between the winter and the summer can get up to 80 Fahrenheit or 27 Celsius, experience significant changes in thermal expansion and contraction. That's why concrete used these days in such climates need to have at least 5 or 6 air content by volume to allow the concrete to breathe, aka expand or contract. Also, when snow falls on a concrete bridge deck, for example, and then cleaned by shoveling trucks which also use the icing salts on the road to melt ice or prevent it from happening, those salts will seep through the concrete because of its porosity and will start corroding the reinforcing steel. So you see that those two reasons, the presence of reinforcing steel and extreme climates are somewhat dependent on each other, where the climate contributes to the corrosion of reinforcing steel 
and thus the inevitable failure in modern concrete. Currently, the number of researchers that are trying to solve the Roman concrete recipe is zero, as the recipe has been known since the mid-1800s. Concrete researchers these days know that the modern concrete is far superior than the Roman concrete, as our modern concrete does use volcanic ash, fly ash, slag, metacarian, and various other supplementary cementitious materials just like the Roman concrete did. The performance levels were not what made Portland cement concrete the dominant construction material of the 20th or 21st centuries. What made modern concrete such a success is that it is extremely cheap, abundant, and easy to manufacture at a massive scale. Not every volcanic ash on the planet behaves similar to the ash used in Roman concrete. Also, when using a natural product like ash, you have to be careful in the quality control process to get the consistency we get currently from Portland cement. If we are trying to build a cathedral in France during the Middle Ages, or a river dam in China in the 20th century, we can use the magic recipe of Roman concrete, but they would heavily depend on the Italian volcanic ash, and thus it would not be much of use to us as it's not abundant and it is far away. The abundancy and consistency of modern concrete are other reasons why modern concrete is better. Finally, there is a logical flaw in the articles mentioned in the beginning of the video called a survivorship bias. It happens when researchers focus on Roman concrete structures that lasted 2000 years and neglect the ones that did not due to the lack of visibility, meaning that more research is needed. To sum up, presence of rebar, different climates, consistency, abundancy, and cheap cost of modern concrete are the main reasons that made modern concrete far better than Roman concrete. I hope you enjoyed this video, I learned something from it. See you next time!